Hello, welcome to Bowmore Online Music. My name is Mr. Butters. Let's get started properly and do some singing. Everybody repeat after me. Welcome to music. Great job. I hope everybody was singing along with me and my guitar, Coco. Everybody say, hi, Coco. And let's get on with music. If you got this video by a link uh, and you wanted to see some of the other YouTube videos that I've made for this online virtual learning environment that we find ourselves in, all you have to do is go to YouTube and you put in uh, Mr. Butter's Music with no spaces in the search engine. And then uh, when you when you click on that, it'll you'll see a picture that looks pretty much like that. And then uh, that'll take you to my YouTube page. And it's a non-monetized YouTube page, no money uh, involved there. It's just for my students. And uh, uh, click on playlists, and Bullmore Online Music will give you all the videos that I've been doing. And uh, so far, we've uh, spent a little bit of time working on "Across the Universe" by the Beatles. Today, I have another Beatles song for you, but instead of singing or or playing it, we're going to read it. This is a book by uh, Mark Rosenthal, who did the pictures. Of course, the music is by Lennon McCartney, the Beatles. Um, well, they're not the only Beatles, but they're the you know, Lennon McCartney, uh, um, uh, Ringo Starr, and George Harrison. Um, but this particular one was written by uh, John Lennon. So the trick here for me is to be able to coordinate exactly when to start the music. So you'll have to forgive me. Um, while I'm trying to, uh, to get that going, I'm going to tell you that this is a lesson for everybody. It's not just for younger kids. It's not just for older, older kids. Of course, you know, you can enjoy listening to the music. Uh, but you can also uh, wait until the end and there is... Um, a music lesson that goes along with it. But let's start with the book and the music. Hopefully I'll be able to coordinate this just right. The trick is to start the video, but not switch the page. Let's see if it'll let me do that. <laughs>
What a great song. Definitely one of my favorites. And, uh, and I hope now it's one of your favorites as well. Um, got the, uh, uh, the timing of the video almost right. Uh, there's so many things, actually, before we go here, there's so many things that we can uh, talk about when it comes to um, All You Need Is Love. Uh, it's, it's a great, great song. It was actually originally made for um, uh, the very first worldwide television broadcast in 1967, June of 1967. Um, so that's like 53 years ago, almost exactly 53 years ago. Um, it was the first time television had been around for a little while. Um, no internet, no, uh, uh, um, no YouTube. This is long, long, long ago before even I was born. And, uh, uh, it was the first time that there was a, a television broadcast that went all around the world. And 19 different countries um, put artists and, and representatives on the TV show. It was two and a half hours long. Pablo Picasso was on there. And um, they, they estimate that between 400 million and 700 million people watched it. And the Beatles were asked to contribute a song. So John Lennon wrote All You Need Is Love, and they performed performed it um, on this one world uh, performance. And it was really a, uh, as a, a really good, uh, a really wonderful um, uh, performance. You'll see all sorts of musicians and celebrities from the 1960s are, are part of it. The Rolling Stones are there and there's a bunch of other people that you might recognize. I'll link the, uh, the original video um, in, into my YouTube page. And then uh, the, the song itself, was put on the Magical Mystery Tour album uh, a little while later. I think it was about six months later that they did that. Um, speaking of albums, we were listening to it on vinyl, and, and these are actually the very first two albums that I ever bought. Um, the, uh, you know, almost everybody says, you know, what are your favorite Beatles albums? The red one and the blue one. These weren't actual Beatles albums. These are compilation albums, but, but lots and lots of people, um, uh, those were, you know, those were their first albums, including myself. I bought it, I don't know, sometime in the seventies. So, uh, you know, 45 years ago or so, and, uh, and they still sound good. So that's, that's kind of exciting. Now, like I was saying, there's lots of stuff that we can talk about when, um, when it comes to uh, uh, All You Need Is Love. And one of the main things, oh, by the way, if you're in one of the younger grades, if you're in grade one or grade two or even grade three, this lesson might be a little tricky. It starts off easy, uh, but then it gets kind of hard. So if, uh, if it gets too much for you, don't sweat it. This is more of a, of a junior intermediate sort of a lesson, and it's on a little thing called time signatures. So like I say, if you're young and you want to uh, give it a shot, Keep on with us. If you're a little bit, uh, uh, if this is seeming a little heavy, yeah, go back and listen to All You Need Is Love Again. What I want to talk about is called time signature. Now, time signature is a couple of things. The first thing and the easiest way of thinking of it is it's the number of beats in a bar. We, we, we measure our music, and sometimes they're called measures instead of bars. We measure our music in bars. Um, but a time signature is also the value or size of each beat. And this is a complicated idea, which I'll deal with another time when I, when I get into um, this, uh, this concept of time signature a little bit more. But the most important thing about time signature is that it sets up the swing of the piece. And I don't mean swing like the jazz um, and blues figure um, that I've taught some of you how to do. I mean just the way that the music swings. Um, not a particular rhythm, but the, the feel of the whole piece. So these numbers right here, that's our time signature. The top number you see represents the number of beats in a bar or in a measure. And you can see that this is four. This is the most common time signature. Almost every piece of music you listen to on the radio is very likely to be in four quarter time. So the top number is how many beats are in a bar. And the bottom number is the type of note that gets the beat. So there's four beats in a bar and each one is a quarter note. That's what the bottom number means. You know that a quarter is one over four. So this is four over four because you've got four 
quarter notes. But of course, you don't have to only have four quarter notes. You can have any number of, uh, of uh, rhythms in there, but we measure them based on these four quarter notes. And there we've got our four quarter notes. Now, like I said, it's the number of beats in a bar, the type of note, the, the value of the note, but also the swing. Um, Old-fashioned music, classical music, the swing of, of four-quarter time is usually on one and three. And you can see right here that that's an accent mark. That means you play that one a little stronger. And there's another accent mark. So if I was to play this one, it would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that the first beat and the third beat are accented. Now, of course, anybody that knows Mr. Butters knows that friends don't let friends clap on one and three. Most modern music has the emphasis on two and four. You can see that the accent is right here and right there. So instead of one, two, three, four, we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's going to be most of the music that we listen to. And the next time you're listening to, I don't know, Sean Mendez or, or Cardi B or whoever it is you're listening to, listen for that, what we call that backbeat feel, that two and four emphasis. Now, here's another time signature, which used to be used a lot more often than it is now, but this is called three quarter time. So again, the bottom number, each beat is going to be worth a quarter note. But the top number, instead of a four, like it was over here, now it's a three. So we only get three beats in a bar. And you can see that I've put the accent on the one. It's almost always on the one. So it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And this is what I mean when I say the swing of the music, that it gives it that one, two, three, one, two, three feel. Now, you might be saying, Mr. Butters, why are you telling us about this right now? Well, that's because there is something that should have been on this screen called complex time. And uh, um, all you need is love doesn't use four quarter time and it doesn't use three quarter time. Actually, that's not entirely true. It does use four quarter time during the chorus, during the um, um, all you need is love part, that part is in four. But the verses aren't in four, and they're not in three, they're in seven. They're in seven quarter time. So you can see that here's uh, a half note, so that would be one and two, because the emphasis, you know, in classical music anyways, would be on beat one. I don't think it really is here in, in this song, but nevertheless, there's one and two, and then three and four. There's our four beat time, one, two, three, four, but then we have a three beat time attached to it, one, two, three. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, or one, two, one, two, one, two, three, depending upon on where you're putting your accents. So it's essentially a four quarter time bar combined with a three quarter time bar. So if you are going through this song and you are wondering how come I keep missing that bar, the, the beginning of the next phrase, it's because the verses are in seven. They're not in three or four. They're in seven, which sometimes makes them a little bit hard to find. Now, if I got out my guitar, you'd see what I'm talking about. That it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Oh, sorry, and it doesn't do that. It goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then it changes. They put a, put a, some four quarter in there, and then they go to the, back to the seven. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's much easier to uh, hear uh, than it is to uh, talk about. So it goes, there's nothing you can do that can't be done. Nothing you can sing that can't be sung. So you got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then um, the chorus, as I said, switches back to four. All you need is love. All you need is love. So that's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
So that's why it gets a little bit confusing, and it even gets more confusing for me when I switch from playing ukulele to playing guitar. If you heard any bad chords in there, it's because I was still thinking about um, playing uh, ukulele, so I hit the wrong chords. Um, while I'm on this picture, actually, I want to point out this shirt right here. I play ukulele. What's your superpower? That was made by this person right there. That's my good friend, Joyce. Um, she's also the one who made my little uh, Yoda keychain that many of you uh, may have seen in my little baby Yoda. Um, but yeah, uh, I play ukulele. What's your superpower? That was by, uh, by my good friend, Joyce. Um, and these people are all my friends from uh, the ukulele jam. So like I was saying, Saying seven quarter time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then just to make it really difficult, they switch to uh, four quarter time for the chorus. So I'm guessing that this might be how some of you are feeling right now, and that's okay. Don't worry. Uh, complex time is called complex time for a reason because. It's complex. It is a little bit uh, a little bit hard to to understand at first, but we'll work on time signatures some more later. I hope you guys are still with me, and I hope you really enjoy. All you need is love. There's only one more song uh, that I'd like to sing. Once again, everybody, sit up nice and straight. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. No wrong note. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to you. I hope you had fun and music today. I'll see you again, I wish you could say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to you. I'll see you again next time. Never fails, hit a bad note right at the end of the video. And if you think I'm going to go back and record that whole thing again, you're crazy. I'm going to leave that note in because everybody makes a mistake. I hope you guys are staying healthy and staying happy and getting some exercise. Make sure you get out and uh, go for a walk once in a while, but keep that two meter distance, at least two meters, and wash your hands lots. And I hope uh, I hope to see you again here on Bowmore Music Online. My name is Mr. Butters, and I'll see you next time.